Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil, and this is MB12 for Tuesday, September 4th, 2012, broadcasting from the Cable 12 studios on Robinson Road. In news tonight, a major investor may have his sight set on the Bahamas once again. Pastors prepare a massive anti-gambling campaign, a Baintown community still reeling from a murder on Hospital Lane last night, and possible pay cuts for customs and immigration workers. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. Your MB12 starts right now. major player in the Bahamas tourism industry says he's open to a possible return if the price is right. Multi-billionaire Phil Ruffin sold his Cable Beach property seven years ago and says he would consider purchasing the Atlantis Resort from its new owner, Brookfield, if the property is placed on the market. Ruffin spoke exclusively to MB12 today. Our Candia Dames has the story. Ruffin is no stranger to the Bahamas, having sold his properties on the Cable Beach Strip back in 2005, paving the way for the multi-billion dollar Bahama development. These days, he's focused on his five-star Las Vegas property, but is also keeping a close eye on investment opportunities in the Bahamas, including right here on Paradise Island, where he spent the last few days. We could not miss Ruffin at the side of Prime Minister Perry Christie on Monday as he toured the luxury Albany development in southwest New Providence. Ruffin told us he was merely tagging along and was impressed by what he saw at Albany, but it's much too soon to say whether he will consider purchasing any of the pricey residences there. We caught up with him at his penthouse suite at the Cove at Atlantis, where he told us he's also impressed with the Paradise Island properties and would not mind taking a look at purchasing them. He marveled over breathtaking Paradise Island views as he discussed the possibilities. Well, I think it's a destination casino, and it, it, it may not, it's a destination, it's got everything. It's got a lot of land, it's got a lot, it's got, it's got everything you'd want. And uh, so if, if Brookfield, who is the owner, if they ever get tired of it, which they may not, I think they might like the asset, but they get tired of it and, and sales go down and, and uh, it comes at a price, we certainly take a look at it. You never chase a deal. You never chase a deal. Uh, you know, I'm sure they've, they've just taken over. I think they're spending some money on the property, and, uh, you know, but they're going to get hurt a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how much, but you know, at some point they may put it on the market. As far as I know, it's not on the market, but if they ever do, we'd have an interest in taking a look at it. Years after he sold his Cable Beach properties, Bahamar's multi-billion dollar development is rising. Ruffin said he has no regrets about selling those properties and believes Bahamar and Atlantis will be able to successfully coexist. It's a major project for a small country like the Bahamas. For You have two major destinations. So it's a good thing. And uh, uh, I'm surprised, I'm surprised some, the Chinese were willing to to do what they did there. And, really but yeah, well, it's a lot of money. And uh, it, uh, uh, it's gonna take a lot to pay it back. But it's really good for the Bahamas. It's gonna employ a lot of people, and you need that. Prior to becoming prime minister in 2002, Christie was Ruffin's longtime attorney. We asked Ruffin whether he considered investment opportunities under the administration of former prime minister Hubert Ingram. I don't think he liked me very much. Uh, you know, I was always a Perry man, and uh, uh, you know, F and M was never my favorite party. Uh, so, you know, he, he, when he looked at me, he, lo he was thinking of Perry, I guess. But you know, we were not great friends. He didn't do any harm to me. He didn't do any harm. But uh, uh, you know, as far as the PLP and the F and M, I'm on Perry's side. And I think he'd be good, very good for the Bahamas, and, you know. He didn't, when I was here, he didn't really do me any favors because he just wouldn't. That's not what he does. But uh, great man, great man. And I just hope his health is good. 
And one other thing, Ruffin said he did not fund, nor was he asked to fund, the recent PLP campaign. While this Paradise Island property is not yet on the market, there are investors who are waiting to see what the new owner's next move will be. Atlantis will remain on Phil Ruffin's radar. But for now, he is contemplating purchasing a residence here in the Bahamas, which he still considers home. Reporting for NB12, I'm Candia Danes. Well, a little later in news, we'll tell you about some other possible foreign direct investors. But first, pastors and members of the Bahamas Christian Council are preparing to launch a massive anti-gambling campaign, encouraging Bahamians to vote no in the upcoming referendum. The pastors convened in a conclave at New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church this afternoon to take a united stance against gambling and assess the issues from legal, philosophical and theological points of view. Christian Council President Rev. Dr. Ranford Patterson says there comes a time when someone must take a stance against what they consider to be wrong. Today, he says, marks the beginning of the church's campaign against gambling in the Bahamas. I, I saw an ad on television the other day where one of the persons from We Care was on television saying to the Bahamian people, we need your help to decriminalize what we are doing. Come on, man, that shouldn't be allowed in our country. You asking the Bahamian people to decriminalize something that you're doing. Come on, where, where are we going to stop? Where are we going to um, stop and say, you know what, maybe we need to reevaluate this? If it's an illegal entity. There's been uh, some uh, miscues, persons um, I think who have perhaps sent a confusing message, uh, being church persons who have spoken of this issue. And um, I think. The faithful believers have been watching that, listening that, saying, but, but that doesn't sound like what the church is about. A and they have gotten confused, and there's, there's a need for uh, the church. People understand what the church is about. They know whether they can articulate it properly. They know the church is against gambling. They know it's against the greed, uh, the avarice, the, the failure to be content with what you have. They know that there's something wrong. And We're getting close to when this referendum is supposed to um, happen and so we need to get our act on the road as quickly as possible and so this is the first in a series of, of um, things that the Christian Council is going to be spearheading to make sure that the general public is fully aware of the issues and as to why they should vote no. This is our starting point where we want to unify the church to come together and to begin the process of putting together our strategic plan going forward. The pastors we spoke to say despite one or two pastors weighing in with their personal opinions on the media, they believe that when the time comes, the Bahamian people will vote no to legalizing gambling in the country. Bringing legal insight to the issue was noted attorney and Queen's counsel Brian Maury. Maury says he was invited to speak to the church leaders and used the opportunity to engage them on the very important issue. Without revealing his personal opinions, Maury explains that he does not see a legal need for a referendum. However, it can give government a good sense of where members of the public stand on the issue of legalized gambling. I don't want to say whether it's necessary or not in terms of a political agenda, but what I, my own view is that in order to decriminalize the web houses um, and to introduce a lottery, I do not think that we need to amend the Constitution in order to achieve that. And so to that extent, a referendum is not a requirement of Article 54, which, which relates to when you're trying to amend certain provisions of the Constitution. I believe that they can, they can, they can decriminalize gambling in a colloquial sense by amending the Lotteries and Gamings Act. I don't think it would require an amendment to the Constitution. Church leaders have already fashioned the tagline for their media campaign, asking Bahamian voters to vote no on referendum day. Patterson declined to reveal much else about the advertising campaign, only to say it would be rolled out soon. And when it comes to the gambling referendum, Prime Minister Perry Christie says government is in the process of retaining consultants to address issues of internet gaming and gaming around casino premises, something he says the country's current gaming laws do not address. There is an effort going on now, not, not just to have a referendum with respect to betting shops and, and, and a lottery, but also with respect to what is happening 
in the context of gaming regulations and casino operations in our country. There, there has been a firm called Dixon, Wilson & Co. Um, out of the United Kingdom that we retained many, many, many years ago um, when I was chairman of the gaming board. Uh, we retained the, the, the gaming board of the United Kingdom um, and they uh, recommended this firm then. And successive governments have retained them whenever we needed um, investigations of complex um, applications for casino licenses, investigating the integrity of the applicants, as well as being able to help us review laws from time to time. Meanwhile, Christie says the government has also received a comprehensive set of proposals from the Bahamas Hotel Association in respect to improving the gaming laws of the Bahamas. He says the BHA has determined that the current laws are not competitive and are seeking a review of the current laws. That, Christie says, is part of the current consultation process. In other news, Baintown residents are in shock after witnessing a murder in their community last night. Police say a group of people were playing dominoes on Hospital Lane when a gunman walked up and shot a 29-year-old man in the head. A team of officers returned to the murder scene this morning to speak with residents about what they saw. Bonnie Toot reports. Just three days before his 30th birthday, Jesnel Edward Roberts became this country's latest murder victim. Police say the Carmichael Road resident was playing a game of dominoes with a group of men here on Hospital Lane at around 10 last night when a gunman walked up to him and shot him in the head. One resident who was too afraid to give her name or appear on camera told NB12 she was at home when she heard a single gunshot. I just see the body on the floor. And what went through your mind? Hmm. Why that happened? Are you concerned about crime in your neighborhood at all? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Very. It's just getting very ridiculous. EMS personnel rushed Roberts to hospital, where he died about two hours later. More than 12 hours after that incident, dominoes remained scattered on the ground. Though he did not live in Baintown, residents say Roberts often hung out in that community with his girlfriend. Owner of the nearby Punchbowl Bar, Ozzy Taylor, says Roberts was a regular at his bar and seemed like a friendly person. To me, as far as I can say, he was nice. And I had no problem with him. He'd come, shoot, pool, buy a drink or two, and then they go down the road and play domino. He was a nice person to me from what I from I know him. The guy boy said. He's friendly. He do dance for people. Police believe the gunman caught Roberts off guard by sneaking through this alley, then ran back through here once he shot him. Head of Urban Renewal 2.0, Superintendent Stephen Dean says authorities are determined to catch that killer. We have no motive in the matter because we are in the early stages of our investigations. We don't even have a description of the gunman at this, point, at this time. So what you see here this morning, that police are coming back as a follow-up, the urban renewal crime prevention teams and our community workers and the area going house to house canvassing, determining whether we could get any information. It is twofold. We also want to reassure residents that we are committed to working in partnership with them. And we also want to find out anyone have any information who these suspects might be. Um, we want to find them. We want to find the persons. Superintendent Dean also sent out this warning to known criminals. Particularly our prolific, prolific offenders who walk around with firearm holding people, shooting people, without any care or concern that the police will continue to target you. The police will continue to develop intelligence on you. And we're going to tell you, particularly our criminal persons who are watching, that we want to send a strong message out to you that you have not been visited by the police as yet. Expect a visit very, very soon. Dean says Baintown is not considered a crime hotspot. However, once an area becomes a concern for police, they usually increase their presence in that community to reduce the level of fare. This latest incident brings the murder count for the year to 84. Six people have been murdered in the Bahamas in just over a week. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonique Tu.